Well, here's another look, and the technique is just ridiculous. Outside of the boot, lots of power, and all the wall and keeper can do is admire the audacity of it. We're going to be seeing this over and over again, Derek. What's up guys, it's Zeran. This is episode 26 of the FIFA 22 Create a Club Career Mode with Zilla FC. And we are in the seventh season. It's three more seasons to go after this. That's three more episodes to go till the end of this series. And we still haven't reached our all 90 our all 90 rated lineup because of this guy, Suho. And that is really sad because he has actually peaked at 89, as we saw from the last episode. But you know we're just going to move on we'll be able to like get our own IT rated squad don't worry but before we do that i just want to show you guys the new kit for this season okay we have the normal navy blue color and it's like a jordan a jordan jersey and like you know it's mixed with nike but then you know it's really cool that the jordan thing is like on the front so it's kind of like a sponsor and i really like those um for the away kit we have this guy i, I I really don't know how to explain it, but the socks are really, really crazy. It's still our normal um, pink. And then this is the first time that this gray color is going to be coming on the 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 away kits. And it's actually really nice. The 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 shirt is really nice because of the design and shit on it. So yeah, actually I actually kinda like it. Alright, so we are not going to be able to get our all nighty lineup with Suho in the lineup and he's the captain, which is sad. And I mean, I really don't want to. Wait, where the hell is Greenwood? Okay, there he is. There he is. I was I was scared for a second that he wasn't in the lineup anymore. Okay, so we can put Foden there because Foden can play left and right. So I'm just going to put Foden there, and all that is left is for Kamavinga to reach 89. I mean, he's definitely going to reach 89, but just in case, I want to maybe get someone new. I have no idea. Alright, we should be able to get Jude Bellingham with the amount of cash that we have. We have like 291 million. And if we get Jude Bellingham, him and Kamavinga can actually run for that centre midfielder spot that Foden was currently occupying. But now he's going to be on the left. And Kamavinga and uh, this guy might just run for it. I mean, I could just leave Kamavinga there, but I actually just want to get another player so we can have a so we can have more depth on the bench. Alright, so we're just going to go with one. 130 as the start and then 165 as the or oh, let's make it 170 just to be safe hopefully hopefully he doesn't get up to 150 but i just hope that we're able to bag this player let's not forget that our <laughs> confidence rating is actually pretty low it's on 44 for goodness sake so we have to try our best to get all of these during this season it's going to be really hard since we're actually rushing through the season and, and i don't want to like spend a lot of time doing all of these objectives that really don't make sense all we have to do is just win the league i guess win the champions league we, did, we couldn't do that in, we couldn't do that for the past three seasons two seasons rather and increase the club's worth i mean th that is obviously going to keep increasing so what we really need to do is okay the same if you sign two young players okay we're going to be getting to bellingham and then i think i'm just going to get some other uh person that is a youth player like one of those generic players so that should be okay and get a streak of five games at least one goal scored in away matches this season i have no idea what the fuck that is but i'm just going to try and do that the youth the youth development i'm not really interested in in this stuff sign for players in youth academy okay this one should be easy so i'm just going to do a youth thing i'm, I'm going to do the i'm going to do it behind the scenes so you guys might not really see this just so that i can actually Stay in this club for the remaining three seasons. After the three seasons, they can sack me for all I care. I have no fucking, I have no fucking care in the world once I'm done with the series. Okay, and it was right on 150, like what I said, and it's a, it's a good thing that this is going to be happening. So I'm just going to accept that, and then I don't know if we should delegate. He was getting 62 in his former club. Uh, yeah, he's actually going to get one hell of a raise. So I'm just going to raise it up to 100, and let's see what they will say about that. Okay, so the transfer offer for Bellingham has been accepted. They went for £145,000. And I, I really don't mind for, for a player of his age and for his talents and for his rating, then that is pretty acceptable. I mean, we have the money for it, so I don't really mind. Okay, so latest player in our team is Jude Bellingham. As you can see, Devo is with the captain's armband because Suho is currently not a starting 11 player anymore. 
so they were just going to be the captain for as long as you know he's going to be the one on the pitch okay so there is a transfer offer for Soho from Aston Villa and <laughs> as much as much as I would love for as much as I would love to sell him just so that he can actually get more playing time I I want to be stingy here and keep him for at least one more season and if he doesn't get as much play time as he's supposed to get then I'm just going to sell him next season if there's any bid for him and we have Zaid injured for the match against Liverpool that is that is fucked up so Suho is the one that's going to get this playing time I'm just going to put Hudson Odoi on the bench for now and I guess we should be good Faulkner is already is already declining so I mean I don't really feel bad that he's going to be playing he's going to be on the reserves because I mean we have a really really crazy bench now and that's what I like to see all right so this is the second time in a row that Liverpool is beating us the freaking committee shield and that is fucked up on so many levels but it's, there's really nothing we can do about it to be honest so I mean it was a penalty shootout and uh, Bellingham did score so I guess that was a good match all in all so who is going to score for us there's a transfer over for Kamavinga from Barcelona and I've got to say I, I, I got this guy from Real Madrid and it's going to be really really fucking weird if I sell him to Barcelona I mean I, I, I doubt that 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 he's going to decline the offer but I'm just going to decline it for him because I mean if you're in Real Madrid you're not supposed to be in Barcelona bro all right so what match am I going to be playing in this season let's see I mean I would love to play this Liverpool match but that that thing is annoying me so much so I'm going to go the same all the way to this Manchester City match and I will play them I think in the last episode they beat us 3-2 or was it us that beat them 3-2 anyways we beat Spurs 3-0 and that's actually a really really good thing all right, so first match against Manchester City, we're going to be rocking our away kit. And I have to say that Zai is back, but I don't want to start him just yet because, you know, he's injured. So he might come on in the second half or something. I don't know. That's if we actually do not beat Manchester City 4-0 before the halftime mark. The fans have waited and wondered, would it happen? Now it has happened. Now it's all about his debut. And a warm welcome. This is the scene here at the Etihad Stadium. I'm your match commentator, Derek Ray, and my partner, ready to bring you all the analysis and technical talk, is Stuart Robson. And we've got Premier League action coming right up. It is Manchester City against the Blades. Yes, thanks as always, Derek. We've got two good teams here, so I'm anticipating a really good game. The atmosphere is electric inside the stadium before kickoff, and hopefully, we're not disappointed. Here's the Manchester City lineup. Well, it's a 4 3 3 formation with a centre forward and two wingers. So it's important that the midfield players give support to the striker whenever the ball goes wide. They can't allow him to be isolated. This should be one to savour. Manchester City get the contest underway. Devoe. That's a well-timed pass. There it is, and just the ideal start. Well, here you can see it again. Good run, great strength, and a composed finish under pressure. That's a top-class goal. That's right. What a good piece of goalkeeping that is. The Blades looking productive here. And slipped through beautifully. They've gone and scored again. They're doing everything in their power to make sure they're not pegged back. Well, here's the replay. It all starts with the delivery into the box. Just begging someone to get on the end of it. And then what a great finish as well. Good connection with the ball, leaving the keeper with little chance. Of defending. Well, there might well be scope for them to counter-attack here. 
They need to get bodies back. Can he finish? And there it is! Three goals in front now. An immense performance. Well, let's look at this again, Derek, because the transition when the ball changes hands is so quick. And once he gets onto it, he just smashes it past the keeper with great technique. Well, when they play like this, they're such a good team to watch. Their passing, movement and finishing have been of the highest quality. If they continue to play at this Oh, Stuart, play... they could be in here. Well, getting in the way, superb save. Greenwood. And breaking at pace with Menace. Foden. And denied by the post. Well timed tackle. Sends it back. A chance then for the respective managers to address Well, the, the way this match is going, I doubt that Manchester City is going to be coming back, to be honest. To be honest, it's not like I'm trying to run away from anything. But. <laughs> I just doubt that they're coming back because they haven't even reached our, our post once. Like, what the fuck is that? Is that how good this team is already? I, I mean, that is just really mad. All right, the match, they end 1-3-1. I, I just knew that they were going to, like, score. But, like, I mean, I, I, I don't really care because they, at least they didn't draw the match or anything to the same because that was that would have been really, really annoying. All right, I don't feel like playing this match against Liverpool. There's a match against Manchester United in October. I could play that one, but then I could also play this one against Chelsea. So this is the one I'm going to run towards. So let's see if let's see what's going to happen in in all these matches leading up to the match against Chelsea. We draw against Leicester City. I wonder I wonder why that is happening. Let's see what we do against Liverpool. We draw against Liverpool as well. That's annoying. We win Napoli 3-0. We win Watford. We win Everton as well. Wolves. I don't know who the fuck that is, but we win them as well. And then we draw against Manchester United. It's really annoying that we're drawing against these big teams because I know for a fact that I will be fucking them up if I were actually playing these matches. Just because of time that I'm not going to play those matches. But, I mean, it sucks that we are not going to be able to play them and fuck them up like I would really, really want to do. Anyways, the match against Chelsea is almost up. We have won all of our matches after that draw against Manchester United. And, yeah, that is... That is commentator's course right there. Because <laughs> we actually lost to Aston Villa, the least likely people. Those are the guys that wanted to buy Suho as well. But, I mean, it's not happening. Let's see what's going to be happening. Oh, shit. I forgot to put Zaid on the team. That means he hasn't been playing all of these matches. He's been coming in as a sub. But you want to know the funny thing. He has 11 freaking goals right under Devil. He hasn't been playing in the starting XI, in the starting 11. But he has... 11 fucking goals that is that is absolutely crazy all right so this is the first match in our home case this is also the first match that zaid will be starting which is very very weird because he's like our team star man but i can't believe bakari went all the way to 94 when he was stuck on 89 before i guess it's because of the development schedule that he wasn't having but i mean Kamavinga is also getting a chance because uh, this guy bellingham has been on the starting 11 since i bought him and well Let's just see what these guys can do. And a warm welcome on what is an ideal night for football, you've got to say. I'm your match commentator, Derek Ray, and sitting alongside me, the former Arsenal, West Ham and Coventry midfield player, Stuart Robson. And very much looking forward to bringing you action from the Premier League. And a look at the starting 11 for Blades. And a look at the Chelsea starting 11. Well, I'm intrigued to see how their two midfield players cope in there today because they look very isolated. Yes, they're good athletes and skillful players, but it's asking an awful lot of them. And so the match is underway.
Pulisic. This looks promising out wide. Surely! Well, such a high degree of difficulty. To the defending. Excellent ball over the top. And the problem not completely solved. What a lovely strike! Lethal piece of finishing. Drilled home with true conviction. Tremendous goal. Well, here's the replay, and you can see why the manager is furious. It's just really poor play, offering up possession far too easily in a dangerous area. And at this level, if you keep doing that, you're going to get punished. It's just not good enough. Can they get in behind them? Promising possession, this. And can they prize them open now? here brilliant save first half from phil foden stewart your impressions well i thought he had a really effective first half not only did he get the goal that gave them the lead but his general play was really good he was a fine goalkeeping to push that away well the goalkeeper got there in the end well his recovery is brilliant here so athletic well, making high pressing work for them here Takes the shot. And using his body to good effect. It might be on for them. It's in. They're looking really relaxed and confident. And not giving the opposition much of a look in. Well, let's see this again. This is counter-attacking football at its very best. And then what a finish. That's been hit with such power and pace. The keeper has no time. Now, well, here's a match coming up on EA TV that I think you're going to want to join us for. Well, the fixtures are... Oh, sorry, Stuart. Look at this. And there it is. Three goals in front now. An immense performance. <laughs> Well, as you can see, he hits this with so much power, but just look at the follow-through. So athletic. That's a dynamic strike. Marvellous piece of skill. Oh, lovely incisive pass. Oh, fantastic effort. He made great contact, but the keeper more than equal to it. Well, you won't see too many better saves than that. It was just brilliant. Chances on. Oh, the goal was staring him in the face, but he couldn't avail himself of it. <laughs> the referee has decided that two additional minutes are in order. Useful looking ball, just needs to stay calm. And there it is, the final whistle, and the fans will be leaving the stadium with smiles on the... Okay, I have no idea why Suho would miss that, but he did miss it. <laughs> and yeah, that, that was absolutely crazy that he missed it, to be honest. But anyways, we're able to get the win against Chelsea. Was that 4-0 or 3-0? I think it was 3 or 4, I'm not exactly sure. Okay, it was 3-0 and it was the front three that scored Foden, what's his face? Foden, Zaid and Greenwood in that order. Alright, so who's the next team that's going to be receiving the wrath of Zilla FC? But I think the uh, Ballon d'Or is going to be sometime after this match. Let's hope that it's sometime. So let's just see if any of our players would win it. And of course, it's Zaid that wins it. That's the third Ballon d'Or in a row for this guy. That's actually very, very big very very brilliant and i'm actually really happy for him that he's going to be able to do it will he be able to do it in the coming seasons i don't know because he's actually low on goals in this season and that was actually all my fault but let's see if he's going to be able to like come out on top anyway i'm more interested in any matches this season I mean, this liverpool match seems promising but i've already played two in this half of the season uh 
All right, so we get 2-0 against West Ham. We win against Newcastle as well. We draw against Southampton, which is not something that I was expecting. 2-1 uh, to Leicester City, that's good. We're into the quarterfinals or, or the semifinals of the FA Cup. We win against Liverpool and we lose against Arsenal, which is very, very fucking annoying. How the fuck did that happen? All right, I think I'm interested in this match. That is the semifinals of the... Uh, Carabao Cup and it's against Manchester United. We draw the first leg. We get to the next uh, leg of sorry, next round of the FA Cup. That's good. We've gotten all wins. We have gone to the next round of the FA Cup as well. And we're going to be coming jumping into this match against Manchester United. To be honest, I'm not really that that interested in playing this match. So I'm just going to do a quick sim on it with this team. Oh my god. Yo, we have finally fucking reached the all 90 rated squad. Foden 92, Greenwood 92, Zaid 97, Devo 92, Kamavinga 90, Graven Birch 91, Davies 92, Arahal 90, Opamecano 91, Bakari 95, and Donnarumma is freaking 94. So that is the all 90 rated lineup right there, baby. And <laughs> to be honest, I don't think anybody can stop about. So, but I'm quite confident in seeming this match and of course we should get the win and we do. Suho and Devo get the goals and I'm not really surprised that we are able to go into the finals of the Carabao Cup. We haven't won this trophy at all and this will be the first time that we're going to win it if we actually do a good job and get to the finals wherever the fuck it is. I have no idea where that, that is at so I'm just going to sim past this Brighton match to find it. Let's hope that we are able to... Yeah, we did good against Everton there. And, okay, it's against Sheffield fucking United. Of course, I don't want to fucking play that. All right, so we're definitely not going to be playing this match. We're going to sim through it, or rather sim to the match and then sim the match. We lose against Bergamo Calcio in the first leg of the Champions League. And I swear to God, if we do lose this match, it's just going to be so fucking annoying. Anyway, it's time for the first trophy that we are to win in this season and it's against fucking Sheffield United we're using our all 90 rated squad and there shouldn't be any problem winning this and if we do not win this I'm going to fucking flip my shit and of course to win it those are my boys Gavin Birch got the goal Foden Zaid and Devo got the goals all right we're stemming up ahead to the second match against Bergamo Calcio why the fuck did we just lose to Leicester City in the fucking FA Cup uh crap 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 well there's still a chance for a treble again and that is going to come by beating these guys we are in our home and we really shouldn't be losing this match and we do win it we win it 2-0 graven birch and zaid get the goals and we actually win it by a very very close one 2 0 in our home and we went through 3-2 on aggregate i believe the next champions league match will be anytime soon probably after that watford match and i'm not quite sure yeah we do get the win against burnley and southampton as well as watford and the champions league match next one is against liverpool and of course i'm going to be playing that one liverpool has been escaping us oh my fucking god they beat us 3-0 at anfield and we are supposed to come back in the godzilla arena and we have to jesus this just reminds me of last season when byron completely fucked us up Please don't let this be deja vu. Please don't let this be deja vu. But anyway, the good the good news is that we're just coming back off a very, very massive win against Manchester City. 5-1. And, well, let's just hope that we're able to win this match against Liverpool. And it's bad news already that our Rahal is getting a fucking red card in, in the previous match. So I'm just going to put Ramos in here. And then, I guess... Is there any other center back that I have been forgetting all my life? No, there is. We don't have another center back after that guy. And that sucks a lot. So I think I'm just going to put Faulkner there just for the sake of it. And Suho, Alvarez, Jovic are on the bench. This is a very, very pretty, it's a pretty solid bench that we got here. I'm going to be starting Bellingham rather than Kamavinga for this match. And are there any changes that I want to make? No, there aren't. I said if you guys have liked the video so far, make sure to smash the like button, also subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and turn post notifications on, also drop comments on what you want to see in the future in this series. I mean, we have just three episodes left, and I'd actually like to know you guys' feedback on these videos. 
So, you know, thank you guys for watching so far and let's see what we do against Liverpool. Good evening on what is, I regret to have to report, a pretty unpleasant night. The rain has been lashing down here. My name's Derek Ray and delighted to have alongside me, as usual on these occasions, Stuart Robson. And it's a quarter-final second leg battle in the UEFA Champions League. It's the Blades taking on Liverpool. Well, Derek, Liverpool really impressed me in that first leg. They were good going forward and completely dominated the midfield area. They surely can't let this one slip. The Champions League quarter-final, second leg, commences. And possession given away. And a foul in the opinion of the referee. Now, what can they do from this free kick situation? another look and the technique is just ridiculous outside of the boot lots of power and all the wall and keeper can do is admire the audacity of it we're going to be seeing this over and over again Derek it comes a little bit harder on the body he's starting to get to that age so I wouldn't be too surprised Size for goal! Oh, he's only gone and found the net! What purity of hit! Caught it absolutely perfectly! Well, here it is again, and just look at this. It's such good technique. It's a wonderful strike from that range. Now, counter attacking possibilities here. was easy on the eye and he didn't miss by much opportunity here and the post denied him decent position Keita, fruitful looking attack, well the post got in the way, oh that is a majestic goal, volleyed home with precision and style, superbly done. Well as you can see, he's so alive to the rebound, he's first to react and then he gets his reward, it's a good goal. Keita, happy to take on the shot. Well, the keeper had us only the home of live football, EA TV, and looking forward to bringing you more action from the Premier League. It's Liverpool facing Manchester United. 
Can he take the chance? And thumped away. In it goes! He's made it a brace for himself. No stopping him, apparently. Well, when you see this again, the defending just isn't good enough. The clearance doesn't get enough height on it, doesn't get enough distance on it, and suddenly the ball's being played back into their danger area, and they don't reorganise it. Mason Greenwood wants to attack from the wide areas. Has someone to play it to. And there is the goal! He's found the net! Joy unconfined! Well, let's have another look at this, because he does really well to pick the right pass here. And the finish is clinical. He just makes it look so easy, doesn't he? A single-minded piece of defending to make sure nothing untoward happened. This might be the perfect counter-attacking opportunity. Can he finish? And he's made it a brace for himself. The defender is just unable to stay with him. And he's having a field day. Well, just look at this again. The speed of counter-attack is so impressive, and there's certainly no doubt about the finish. He really hits it with power and accuracy. Nothing the keeper can do about it. Kamavinga. He's got to score! Oh, a save right out of the top drawer. Eduardo Kamavinga. It should be! And the keeper's hand does the trick. It takes a lot of skill to control the volley like that. It really is unlucky. There's the final whistle. The travelling fans are full of the joys because they are moving on. Well, they weren't at their best today, but their performance in the first leg was really good. They just weren't quite sure how to approach this one. In the end, though, they are through... It's the third, for third fucking time there that we are leaving the Champions League at this stage and it's just so fucking annoying. <sighs> we were coming back, I, I, in the second half, I threw it all in, this goal, this goal deserved to win this match, to be honest, this goal fucking deserved to win this match, <sighs> crap, I guess the only piece of good news from that match is that Suho is now on fucking 91, baby, and I'm, I, I'm so happy that this is happening, because I, I legit thought that he picked at 89, I legit fucking thought that he picked at 89, and guess who is on fucking 91, he just came out, surprised everybody, and well, how old is he? He's 32. He's 32, and he was just able to reach that that mark. How old is that? He died. He's 26. And to be honest, I'm just really happy that we're able to do that. Now our squad has more. Sorry, our our, our bench has more depth. We have uh, this guy at, at 88, and then this guy at 90. And I think we're set. Alright, so just one more match for us to play in this episode and we're simming all the way to the match against Arsenal. We do draw against Chelsea. We, I have no idea the result against that team there. We win against Norwich City as usual. Hopefully we can win against Manchester United and we do. We just barely get that win in there in, at, at Old Trafford and now for the final match of this episode. And, I mean, it's good to know that we have already won this thing. I mean, I completely forgot to check this calendar. So, I have no idea what would have happened if we were the ones that were 10 points clear from Liverpool. But, thank God that's not the case. And we are, we've already won it. But, let's just hope that we can get this final win against Arsenal to clinch our spot. Or that, I mean, we've, we've already clinched the spot. But. And, yeah, Zaid indeed came back. He fucking came back from being the second in the team and he has scored 32 goals. If we were able to play this guy from the beginning, then he would have been able to reach 50. Who knows what? Conrad Zal reached 55 in our previous episode. And Suho did well again and he has dropped back down to 90 because he's actually he, st he has started to decline, which is actually sad, but I mean. Um, he has been a really, really good player for us. Gavin Burch got his all-time high at 14 goals. And, I mean, I got to say, Zaid has been the player of the season every season since that first one that Rivera won. Or rather, since the first two that Rivera won. And that is really good. That's five seasons running. He has been the player of the season. So, one more match stands between us and that title. And 
to be honest, it has been a really, really fucked up season. It has been a really good season. We won the Premier League already, basically. We lost the Champions League for the third year in a row in the fucking quarterfinals to a fucking annoying team, a fucking annoying way. But we moved. We will try again next year. We're never giving up. We must get that that Champions League again before we finish the series. Uh, we won the Carabao Cup and we lost the FA Cup. So all that, all that together has been really, really, really good. And last match against Arsenal. And let's see what we can do in this match. I just want to change change the Arsenal kit to their home kit because I do not like that one. It looks like drugs to me. Anyway, so thank you guys for watching. If you guys did enjoy this video, make sure to smash that like button and also subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Turn on the post notifications so that you'll be notified from where new video drops. I think I'm going to be coming up with WWE videos very soon. I have no idea. And the Conrad Zan, the Conrad Zan series is going to have to chill a bit because I want to do the thing where I'll just display only the goals he scored in the season and well till i'm able to like figure out how exactly i want to do that i really wouldn't be posting any conrad zan videos so if you have made it this far in the video and you also watched that series then i mean it's just good for you to know it because i don't think i said it in the last in the previous episode of conrad zan so thank you guys for watching we have one more match to play i'm not going to be talking after this match so i'll see you guys in the next zilla fc video peace and a look at the starting 11 for Blades. And this is the Arsenal starting 11. Well, although we have it down as a 4-5-1, it's actually more likely to be a 4-2-3-1. They play with two holding midfield players, a number 10 and two wingers. The system has a nice balance to it. And the game begins. Using his physical strength to shield it. It's a neat move. Chance to cross. Ryan Grafenberg. And he takes it on. And denied by the keeper. Impressive. And a goal! That will do it. They've been pushing for it. And now they've been rewarded. Well, here's the replay, and I have to say, the keeper's got his angles all wrong there. That's a poor piece of goalkeeping. Control possession, but when they have had it, they've looked so dangerous, particularly... Oh, they might score here, Stuart. Watered by the post. And you, I think. Yeah, it's a goal for Wolves. It was a breathtaking finish. A shot from such a long way out. I'm... Denied by the bar. Back in play here. Played it well defensively. Right, just getting word that there's been a goal at Stamford Bridge. Let's hear all about it from Alex. He's got to score! Oh, a moment of pure class! Had to catch it perfectly, and didn't he just? Well, here it is again. He goes past his marker so easily with just a drop of the shoulder. And then just look at the finish, Derek. He reads the flight perfectly and absolutely smashed it. Well, someone has found the net in the Manchester United game. Let's find out exactly who. Alex Scott. Yep. He's in here. Tries to lift it. Well, well, well. How many players would have the confidence to try that? Simply magnificent. Well, this is a brilliant finish. Great awareness, good technique, and a bit of composure as well. What an excellent goal that is. 20 minutes left in this game. Excellent ball over the top. And he might be in here. And he's only gone and made it a hat-trick. Absolutely unplayable today. What a performance. 
Well, here it is again, and that's the perfect volley, isn't it? He strikes it so well. What an excellent finish. Weston McKenney. This might have potential. This looks threatening. And a goal it is. The keeper really not part of the equation. Well, here it is again. It's an easy finish in the end, but what was the keeper thinking? That's a poor bit of defending. Well, he likes to run at them. And there's the final whistle. In a way, this game had an academic quality about it. Everyone here, including the players, just waiting for the moment when they can celebrate their accomplishments. The trophy will soon be theirs. Well, it's been a long wait, but it's worth it. Celebrating in front of their own fans. They've been excellent this season. They fully deserve to be the champions. And that is a vivid picture of what we associate with this group of players. It's all about the team ethic. You can see what it means to this tight-knit team. Real solidarity. Well, this is special for everybody at the club. What a great moment for any young player. And this is what you dream about when you start playing football. When you're playing in the playground, you want to win a cup. Brilliant moment. Yes, a special moment in the career of any footballer. And now for the trophy lift itself. The cup winners. Well, you can just see what it means to those players and the manager. That's fantastic stuff. There's always the element of chance in a cup competition. But my goodness, they've taken the rough with the smooth. And now they savour the moment. Four marks to the entire team. And now they get the chance to exhale and enjoy. They've been brilliant in this competition. And so have the fans. They've really got behind their team. They've played a big part in this win. Just look at those faces in the crowd. Great stuff. They're really a match made in heaven between players and fans. And these celebrations are going to continue for quite some time.